century into this century, we've seen change in the church. And sometimes it scared us, and sometimes we closed our eyes and pretended like it didn't happen, and sometimes we said, well, it really isn't the will of God. And yet, when we look at the life of Jesus and we look at the words of Jesus, it seems clearer and clearer that we were getting some things really wrong. It was Christians that hung African Americans on the church grounds in the South on Sundays and made a family picnic of it, right? It was Christians. I have a friend who's a pastor who was a young first time pastor in the 60s in Mississippi. And his session said to him at one session meeting, well, I hear the blacks are coming to, you know, coming to our church on Sunday and we can't have that. We can't have African Americans, although he certainly didn't say that word. Coming into our churches on Sunday and the session voted right there in front of my friend to chain the church doors meaning they'd rather not worship than let somebody else come in a stranger and be part of their worship that literally happened and my poor friend who was about 23 Presbyterian he had to say to his session full of men, of course, only men in those days, full of men who'd been Presbyterians for decades. No, you can't do that. God does not want that. And he had to find a way to convince them not to do that. And somehow the church managed to change. It was Christians who said that women were not good enough to be ordained, even though in the first century, in the New Testament, there are stories of women elders, Phoebe. But, you know, we got to fix that. So in some versions of the Bible, they changed a name into the masculine form. You can see it between versions where it happened. Because this woman was a leader in the church, and so they changed it to the masculine form of the name to make it into a man. You know, years later, of course, when nobody was alive to know anything about what it had really been. You can see it in the documents. It was Christians who said that, you know, all gay people are just going to hell. God hates gay people. I lived in Oklahoma when Westboro Baptist Church in Kansas used to parade around all kinds of places with signs that said, you know, God hates fags. Christians. The church reformed and always reforming because we have a lot to reform about. And hopefully we've learned some things over the years. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. Do good to those who persecute you. Jesus said, love your enemies. Not just love your next door neighbor whose cat you like and whose kids are fun. Jesus said, love your enemies. We let those people in the door. We, not, we don't just let those people in the door. We need those people in the door because they're not really those people, are they? They're us. We need all of us and any of us who are interested in being a part of this ragtag children of God that worship on Sunday and try to reform our hearts so that we can be more like God. In the Old Testament, God says, you will be holy because I am holy. We are called to be a holy people. 
And now you've come to a place where maybe you're going to be selling this building. There's a for sale sign out there in case you haven't noticed. Because this group is too small to afford this facility anymore. That's the hard truth. And so, you know, you can close the church and just go find someplace else to worship, you know. Find another Presbyterian church or go be a Methodist or a something else. Or the session is working toward maybe selling this building and finding another place to worship and not, not putting an end to this congregation, but just moving down the road. How many of you have downsized as adults? I'm doing it right now. I got rid of boxes and boxes of books and my heart bled while I was doing it. But my house has a lot fewer books now and a lot fewer DVDs and a lot fewer CDs than it used to have. So maybe we're going to be downsizing here and that's okay. That's okay. Because maybe God is calling us into a slightly different ministry. Maybe in a different geographical place, maybe down the road somewhere. But it's God calling us. It's Jesus standing at the door. No whip, no cords, no nothing. And saying, you know, Come follow me into this new possibility. And all we have to do is listen, listen with our hearts and get up and be willing to change and follow. Amen. Amen. So this is the Lord's table, not a Presbyterian table, it's the table of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all who are interested in trying to find a way to live the life that Christ calls us into are welcome at this table. 
are needed at this table because we are a community that Jesus feeds. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart <clears throat> and lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us give to give our thanks and courage. We give you thanks, O God, for this table and for these people and for the words of life that you have given us. We thank you for your presence here that we might remember in the midst of this meal that you are our nourishment, that you feed our hearts and our spirits, that you are here with us. We give you thanks, O God, that you gave us your son to be for us the one that we look to the one who leads us and calls us and nourishes us in all that we do we remember that on the night when jesus would later be betrayed when he sat at table with his followers with those who had been with him in his public ministry when he sat at table with his followers he took bread and he gave thanks to you O oh God and he broke it and he said take and eat this is my body given for you Do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, which is sealed in my blood which is shed for the sins of many. Take and drink of this and do this in remembrance of me. And we know that as often as we eat this bread and we take this cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's sight, saving life and death and resurrection until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. If the servers would come forward. Now we will um, pass out the elements. And if you would hold the bread and wait, and we can then eat together as a symbol of our community. <laughs>
of Christ given for you. Thank you, O Lord, for renewing us at your table. Thank you for your eternal love, the bread of life that sustains all of creation. Amen. Let us offer to God our gifts and thanks of praise.
Most holy God, please receive our gifts for use in your holy kingdom. May they help spread the blessing of your love into the world. Amen. Please join me as we say what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and set it on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
picture of the sign because I like it. And then you 